All right. Hi. Hi, Rivka and Daniel. Thank you so much for joining our coding cre creative coding series. You are DXR Zone, and we are so happy to have you today. And you're going to share what you do because you do a lot of different things. So we are really looking forward to hearing from your work and your process and all that. Okay. <laughs> right. Is that um, an easy place for you? Yeah, I guess should we share a screen? Um, yeah, yeah, should we share our screen? Um, that one. Nice. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Amazing. Okay, sweet. I don't know what it will do when we open links in it, but it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, can we share? Can we share the link in the chat so you guys can go through the links? Have a play um, websites as we go through them, or is it all on screen? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, I, I was trying to switch off the light and sorry that it's not working. But yeah, yeah, of course you can share and then I'm gonna share it on the Slack right now. Amazing. Okay, sweet. So link. Uh, oh, there's the chat. Cool. Hopefully that works. Okay, perfect. Cool. Whenever you're ready. Sweet. So, um, yeah, we're in the XR zone and we are, um, what are we? We're I guess <laughs> creative coders, art directors, digital designers, uh, web developers. Web developers. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of changes every time someone asks. So, like, what do you do? We're like, um, we well, basically people make, throw money at us to do. <laughs> yeah, which is <laughs> which is mostly websites, but it's kind of like there's sometimes some other stuff as well. Um, but yeah, we'll kind of start showing you through it, and hopefully, it'll make a little bit more sense. Um, and we've been, oh yeah, this is us. We've been going for about I think almost four years, yeah, which is no, really yeah. scary and makes me feel old. Um, and before that, we were kind of like, we knew each other through sort of friends working in like graphic design, illustration, like various things um, in London, and then started sharing a studio and doing kind of exactly the same thing um, side by side, but sort of like separately as freelancers. Um, and then after a while, we were like, hang on, we're doing exactly the same thing. We should probably just start working together on stuff and hopefully be able to like, help each other through things and I like, take on bigger jobs and projects and seem a bit more legitimate, um, <laughs> which is also quite funny. Um, but yeah, both of us come from kind of graphic design backgrounds and both of us, like neither of us really thought we were gonna end up doing coding as our sort of main job. And I think followed kind of a similar trajectory of like, being like oh we could like we need to make ourselves a website kind of individually um and then from that point being like like you know someone else would see the website and be like oh can you make one for me and then yeah after a while it's kind of like the only thing we were both doing um but yeah yeah cool um so yeah what are you gonna learn um yeah i guess today we're just gonna go through some of the work we've done, um, how we kind of did the jobs, and then a little bit how about how to kind of select jobs from the big pool of jobs that are going to come your way if you're creative coder at the moment. Basically, there's still, I think creative coding as an industry is still really small. I think between us in London, we have a WhatsApp group with about 20, 25 people, and that seems to be the entire creative coding community in London. Um, so when people are looking for people to do like brand activation sites and like fun portfolio sites, you tend to get flooded with work quite quickly. So we thought we'd go through a little bit about how we select work from the never ending chain of emails that <laughs> seem to come in sometimes. 
So let's have a look. Oh yeah, so where we where we kind of sit in the big world of coding. Um, basically, because we both, like Riff said, we both came from graphic design backgrounds um, and never really formally trained in code or anything to do with computer science or programming. Um, there's kind of two, two trains of thought with coding at the moment in the industry. There's kind of people who come from a computer science background that make like really slick websites that work really fast, but aren't quite as fun, I don't know, maybe not in our eyes anyway. And then there's people who come from our side, which are kind of from a more creative background, usually kind of self-taught code. Not everything always works as it should, but sometimes they're more fun, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know though, I feel like, I feel like we're getting there a little bit more, like, <laughs> To yeah. be to give ourselves the benefit of the doubt and to give some of our mates a bigger benefit of the doubt. Um, I think it's definitely possible to like come from either side and like then sort of like like start out with a solid basis and either like making websites that work or making websites that are fun and then kind of like building up the other bit. Yeah. So that hopefully in the end you meet in the middle and you're kind of like you can make fun websites that work. Yeah, why <laughs> we're not there quite yet. <laughs> we will be. Um, then let's have a look. What did we? All right. What have we put here? So this one, um, yeah, this one's kind of like the first website we worked on together, and it was. I think it's kind of the first and almost the last website we actually worked on where both of us were working on it because it was so kind of chaotic and traumatic. <laughs> um, but you know, we'd like just formed the studio. We were like, this is great. We're going to work on everything together from that, from now on. We're never going to like feel like, oh God, like there's this bug in the code and we've got to just like, and like one of us has got to fix it. Um, so the first thing we took on with this project, which had like quite a tight deadline, I think it was only a few weeks long and yeah, we, we like weren't used to working together by this point. And we were just like, this is great, this is so exciting. Um, and ended up like working on it together by kind of taking it in turns to code and sleep. <laughs> so while one of us was coding, the other one was sleeping. And then the sleeping one would wake up or the coding one would fall asleep and then we kind of swap around. Um, and it, I mean, the site got built in the end and I, like, I think both of us have a real soft spot for it just because it's like one of the first things we made. And, like I don't, I, I don't think it's that bad to be honest. Considering, <laughs> but Are you guys I, able to see? You able to click the link? Um. Oh, you wanted to click? Okay. I. Well, I think we're gonna do that. Yeah, yeah. Can you see okay, that? Cool. Yeah. 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 Okay. So. Oh, okay. Sweet. Oh, maybe it'll never. I don't know. It's it massive. Might. It might not load. But yeah, like like we're saying, I guess. Um. I mean, if you guys have been experimenting with code, then you'll know there's kind there's there's never one set way to do things. There's always 20 different ways you can do the exact same thing. So I think this was kind of a baptism of fire in working together mm -hmm. and realizing that we both actually work completely differently. Yeah, because <laughs> um, I think we've gone from being like, oh, we're both the same, we create coders, we're both from graphic design backgrounds. But I think like, particularly because neither of us had ever like formally trained in any of it, um, we'd both, we've both like developed these really idiosyncratic, probably like, wrong ways of doing things that really really don't work together so the one that was like coding would be working on something that the other one had just finished working on and i'd be i'd be like sat there being like this i mean it all looks great it looks really different from the last time i was like doing something on it but i have no idea what this thing means or this block of code does or like anything and i don't want to wake dan up because he's just been awake for like 18 hours just <laughs> chipping away at this um so yeah i think this after this project we sort of decided that we were gonna just work like work under the same name and like help each other out and kind of be like we're a studio but both work kind of separately um yeah which we've done ever which, since the, yeah. <laughs> I think it's only in the past like this must have been about three three and a half years ago now and i think it's only the past like month or so we've semi started to work together <laughs> yeah <laughs> and very cautiously 
But the other thing this site did was kind of cement us in this weird corner of the industry where big fashion brands always seem to want their, like their logo spinning in 3D on everything they do. If they ever do like an interactive web experience, for some reason in fashion, fashion clients' brains, that just means spinning 3D logo. So for months after this, all we did was spinning 3D oh, logos for so fashion nice. brands. But then it eventually started to, uh, to change a little bit. We got to do some more fun stuff again. Let's see what we've got next here. Oh yeah, exactly. So this <laughs> one came shortly after. And this was another one where a big brand wanted spinning 3D logo. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was a long time after actually. This was oh no, is that gone? Oh, Let's see if we can get it on. Is it on? What would the link be? Um, is it? Uh, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, Adidas equipment. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the one. Yeah, there we go. That's the one. There we go. Sorry, a lot of a lot of the time, obviously, like things we work on are kind of like only active for a certain amount of time. And then we go back to them and we're like, hey, look at this thing we did. And then it's gone, <laughs> um, just like, just happened now. Um, so yeah, things are a bit chaotic and talk to them. <laughs> it's our fault and we're sorry. Like, who was it that spun the shoes in the end? Was it Ash? Oh, uh, no, it was, no, it wasn't. It was um, Form Catcher. Uh, another running theme through a lot of the work we do is People whether it's like, like big brands or for friends, we always just seem to end up working with our friends, like a lot of the 3D sites we do, it'll be Rooker's housemate that does all the 3D scanning. Or if we ever need sound, it'll be my old housemate who's a producer that does all the sound. Or we'll have, if we need a designer, it'll be someone we met at the pub or someone we live with who does the design on it. It's all very nepotistic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think also, like, it's kind of maybe hopefully quite reassuring that, like, a lot of the people will when you graduate a lot of people you'll be working with are the people that just like sat around you right now and it won't necessarily be like in the capacity that you're working at the moment but you will most likely like end up linking up and doing lots yeah. of work together um which is quite nice um oh, oh the site itself did we even talk about the site no we so didn't the site, basically the site is uh it was for an Adidas launch where these four trainers were, were trainers they released, I think like throughout the 90s and early 2000s. And they got in touch with 12 of their like best international retailers to each design their own iteration of the trainer. And then each retailer had their own page with like a little like archival history of their shop and like what they've done to the trainer and how they've done it. So our friends, 3D scan the trainers, and obviously a big, so if you've used any 3JS or WebGL for making sites, a huge constraint is the actual size of the files and how quickly you can get them to load. So the main challenge with this site was to get the 3D scans down to a file size where they'd load quickly enough. So I think each of these shoes is about a megabyte, just under a megabyte. Yeah, but still um, somehow keeping like the detail, which yeah. to be fair, we weren't responsible for Swift Army. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, our friends are really good at 3D scanning stuff. So without the textures, um, these things are just essentially blobs, but then use the textures on the blobs to uh, fake like height maps and like the way the light hits it and the texture and stuff like that to make them look way more detailed than they actually are. Yeah. Oh, and if anyone's kind of not familiar with the terms WebGL or 3JS, they're basically like when you see 3D stuff on the internet, um, that's all done with something called WebGL. And then 3JS is like this tool that we use, um, which basically like WebGL is like horrible to write. It's really kind of difficult to sort of like understand. see what things are and understand and comprehend and stuff. And it's um, 3JS is kind of this, this tool that like is really widely used and it sort of powers a lot of the 3D stuff you'll see on the internet and all the like interactive kind of 3D bits. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of, like I think that since the first project, that was another one that we did using 3JS and I think, yeah, we kind of, that's become a little bit of a running theme with, we've ended up just doing like a lot of 3D the logos. 3D fashion brand guys. Yeah, the 3D, <laughs> that fashion brand guys. Um, but this one, 
actually this one does have a bit of 3D in it, but it's kind of minimal. <laughs> this one was kind of um, nice because it was like, again, it was like a friend who was launching a publication and then just by coincidence, another friend had like designed all the sort of graphics on the actual kind of printed publication and they wanted to make a website launch of it and to kind of become this archive of the stuff that wasn't actually that didn't like go to print or that was kind of like created afterwards um so it's kind of nice it was like the first time i like had been asked to do like a site that wasn't like entirely in 3d for a while even though i did see this bit ended up being still kind of too. <laughs> we can't escape it um but yeah, the kind of challenge was to make um, something that kind of looked a lot like the publication, but was like, yeah, kind of really usable on like, on desktop and on mobile. And then I think the most exciting bit for me, although it actually probably isn't that exciting for anyone else, is that there's a submissions page where people can um, sort of submit their own content and then it all comes up on this archive page. So it's not just like a, a blog or something where you're kind of like just typing it into the dashboard and there it is it's like it's this kind of living archive where a lot of people can contribute and it becomes like a little bit i guess less hierarchical because of that um that reflection is sick i haven't seen that before. um <laughs> so sorry do you think you can just like move up to to your mic just a little bit because um we, we don't oh, yeah, hear you well yeah so sorry great Thank so you. Also, Thank if you have any questions throughout, if we're ever going through anything, please feel free to put in or we'll okay. talk absolute nonsense for yeah. the next time. <laughs> <without it. laughs> That's the other thing. I think we just talk over each other until someone's <laughs> voice wins out. So, like, yeah, we could just carry on. So, please stop us if you need to. This one was another 3D fashion one. <laughs> we can't escape them. Um, What's that? But this one was another one where, so some friends we went to uni with started working at the Face magazine. Um, and then through that relationship, they got in touch with us because they needed a site for a brand activation. This one was for um, Nike this time, rather than Adidas. And basically they had um, this girl, Tiffany Calver, who's like, I guess she's like, a grime producer, oh, but yeah, she was being yeah. used as the talent to relaunch these Nike trainers. And what they basically wanted to do was have the two worlds she exists in, kind of her like imagined world and her like current bedroom. So this 3D artist remade her bedroom in 3D and then also made her like imagined perfect world in 3D. And then we stuck them side by side and populated them with little things that details. Let's have a look what we can get on there. Which you can then like click around the room and have a little look at. And this is all 3DS, WebGL. And then my housemate did the sound design. <laughs> I think that was about it for that site. It was just a fun one to play with. Yeah, it's sick. I can't, I can't believe I've never seen this one. And <laughs> I think that's the other thing as well. Like, um, I've never actually seen this one kind of in the flesh till today. I've just seen like a sort of video of it. Um, and then like with Dan earlier being like, oh, I haven't seen that reflection before. Um, I think a lot of the time we tend to work so separately that we kind of forget what the other one's doing. <laughs> and then like a few months later, we'll be like, oh, that's cool, mate. Like, like what you've done there. Um, yeah, I don't know what the moral of that story is, but I think it's like, <laughs> it's quite, it's quite nice in a way. Cause like, I think it's, I think it's nice cause you're able to like, it is possible to like be a studio, but also not have this really like, rigorous and kind of like rigid schedule where you have yeah, to be in the studio at the same time you have to kind of like 
just be working on everything the same at the same time. Um, yeah, I think yeah, as a working practice in general, we're both pretty really laid back. <laughs> <laughs> like, chaotic laid back. We like, share we share a physical studio space, but there's no kind of set times you have to be in. There's no kind of set jobs you have to do that day. We both kind of we share an inbox. We take on projects, and we kind of do those projects at our own pace. I think working under the studio title just helps us a lot with like finances and actual like business organizations. Whereas if we were on our own, it'd be way more stressful and kind of way more hand to mouth. At least now we can kind yeah. of like back each other up and support each other when things get chaotic. Definitely. And I think it's always kind of, there's always like a little bit of kind of figuring out like how much we kind of collaborate on things and how much we like discuss everything and how like granular that whole kind of discussion needs to be. Um, which always kind of changes and stuff, but I think it's quite nice to have that sort of flexibility because both of us have worked in um, sort of like more like traditional like design studio settings before. And I think like personally, I found it really, really draining because like it just felt like most of my energy was taken up by trying to like be like organize yourself. And it just kind and of I becomes think, a nice for a while. Yeah, yeah. Whereas I don't know, designers, freelancers, creatives in general, especially in this day and age, if you can work from a laptop from anywhere, there's no need to treat it as a kind of nine to five where you have to be in one place and you have to be there in the morning, leave in the evening. It's much nicer. To, like we're given the option to take it at your own pace. So why not do that? Yeah, definitely. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So the next one. <laughs> um, the next one is this one for um, an artist called Claire Barrow who and again it's like another 3D one it's another one where it's through like a friend of a friend um, this one was through we, we actually met Claire through my old housemate Ailey who um, we also did a website for um, I think like the year before this um, and I think there was like a real thing during, like during lockdown, especially where we'd kind of be asked to do like, make kind of like a physical space, but make it in like, you know, in the browser in virtual reality, because obviously with the pandemic, like no one could go anywhere and everyone's like, okay, like how do we like recreate all these kind of real life experiences online? Um, so I think at first there were a lot of clients like asking for us to just like make them a kind of white like cube gallery kind of space and then after a while some of the requests got a bit more interesting and people started being like oh can we like with the tiffany calver thing um kind of like can you make us this like world that actually we wouldn't be able to have in real life like what's because i think yeah what's quite nice is like in like the digital space it's like you don't have to just like recreate something that's like you know the exact replica of a physical space like why not just like chuck in some other stuff because you can um so this website i think it was maybe like one of the longest running projects we've had because there was just like more and more and more stuff that we ended up like adding and like i think claire got like really excited about like adding more stuff we got like really excited about adding more stuff and then sort of encouraged each other and the project just ended up taking like over a year to do. Um, and then also my housemate, who is like a 3D designer, ended up getting involved in like 3D scanning, like loads of artwork that um, Claire had made. So the whole kind of premise for it is that it's this, um, it's kind of this like doll's house, or I suppose it's a little bit like the houses on The Sims, but a much more basic version. Um, and the whole thing was that I wanted to make it so that Claire could actually like go in and update the 3D scene herself without, um, and like add new scenes and stuff like that without having to like code anything herself. Um, so we kind of made this whole system where, I wonder, I wonder if I can show you the, the sort of the other side of the site, which has this whole and a system for editing things. But I think, yeah, the sort of general idea was that we wanted to make it almost like the sim in the builder mode where like 
you can kind of reposition things in the space, but in a really quite basic way. Uh, but then also like the other thing was that we wanted it so that like, you know, if someone was looking at it on a really old phone or like had some kind of like accessibility requirement, we wanted it to be like viewable for them. So we made this whole kind of like alternative 2D kind of mode. Um, actually, hopefully this doesn't take too long to load because I know it's pretty heavy. Um, Okay, here we go. Um, so there are all basically when it loads, hopefully it will make a little bit more sense. There are all these like different settings, so you can kind of change the size of the room, you can change like the wallpaper, you can change like the little thumbnail image that comes up on this kind of menu bit. Um, And then, so this is the like room that we like just went into. Um, but it's kind of like you can change. Ooh. You can do all sorts of things like, yeah, like changing the color of the floor or from that. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, or like changing the lights and stuff like that. That should work. Yeah, there we go. Um, and then kind of having all these like different, yeah, like models, like that's that one there basically. Um, sorry, it's really slow because we're on Zoom at the same time, so I'm going to stop talking about that because it's going to be really boring <laughs> to watch. Um, but yeah, that was kind of the thought behind that. Um, yeah. Sweet. What else do we put in there? Yeah, definitely close that tab. Oh, it's about time for your D-site oh, open now. It's going to start <laughs> crying its eyes. So there we go. Mm -hmm. Just a minute. There we go. Uh -huh. Right. So, like we were mentioned earlier, I guess if you do continue coding after university, this is like, we're in like the heyday at the moment. Everyone on the planet seems to need creative coders at the moment. It's like, I guess like graphic designers in the eighties or something when everyone needed like record covers and stuff. Like everyone at the moment seems to need some kind of digital, I guess, arm or digital alternative to any kind of record release or fashion release or kind of new, um, I don't know, what would you call it? Like any new campaign or anything, yeah. not even fashion and music, everyone needs, because I guess everyone is accessing their news through phones and through Twitter and through Instagram. So to have something to link through from there is kind of where the whole game is at the moment. So there's a lot that needs doing. And this, this is kind of the little graph we use to figure out if we want to do a job or not. Um, and what tell us, I guess, like, so do we actually want to do it? That's a yes or no. Is it going to be fun? That's one you kind of have to gauge where is the client nice? I don't know. These two kind of work in unison. A lot of the times you'll get an email and you can tell just by the wording of the email whether someone's going to be a complete asshole or not. <laughs> so that if that one's a yes, then you've got to decide if this one's a yes, because often this one's a yes and this one is an absolute no. Um, Will it be a really nice one to show people when we do lectures and stuff? I don't know, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and then is what they're asking realistic? Do they have, do they want like a year's worth of work for like a hundred dollars? Or do they want like something that's going to be really easy, that's going to take a few hours? Um, what do they actually want? How long is it going to take? Is that realistic for us to be spending a load of time on? Yeah, so it's kind of like, you know, if a job's going to be like really fun, but maybe like a bit stressful, it's kind of like weighing up the stress versus the fun quite often will be, I think, 
I don't know, at first we used to just be like, okay, we'll take everything, we'll take everything <laughs> on and then we have way too much on our plates and maybe cry and <laughs> just get really stressed out. And I think more recently we've become a lot stricter with ourselves. So it's like, and it's nice to be able to do that as well. I think that's yeah. like a privileged position to be in. But um, I think, yeah, so if something's gonna be like, not a lot of fun, but the client's really nice and it pays reasonably well, then it's kind of like working out like where that cut off point is when it's kind of like, like if it's going to be like really boring, maybe we won't do it. But if it's going to be like a bit boring, then that's fine. Or like the other way around, like if it's something that's like going to be really fun, but maybe the budget's not great and the timeline's a little bit unrealistic, we have to like really want to do it as opposed to just kind of a little bit want to do it um, before we kind of and then I guess like slightly like take it on three years in this I guess we can kind of we kind of started to separate the jobs into like three main categories so there's like the first category is jobs and friends uh the second category I think this came about kind of through through lockdown and through COVID we're doing like a lot of big fashion projects, a lot of projects with friends, but then we were like, actually, like these projects are serving absolutely nobody. Like, what are we actually doing to like be good humans and maybe give back a little something? So there's like the the mixed projects. Then I guess like we started to call them like independents or charities or like people that are wanting to do something for like a, a bigger cause or something that might like give back in a way. And then the other one is the big um just the big jobs the ones yeah, that pay the bills the ones that keep the, the lights on, yeah the yeah yeah that, like, the ones that keep everyone paid in the background so we can do all the other fun stuff yeah and i think it's kind of yeah it's always about getting that balance between like doing enough jobs to like yeah pay the bills and stuff um and not kind of being unrealistic and being just like we're just going to do fun jobs this month but also not falling down the road of just doing big corporate Kind of money jobs and not doing any fun jobs because then at that point it's like well why didn't we come become like doctors or something <laughs> like we wanted to like do this job for fun in the first place so you do still need to kind of maintain a little bit of that so you don't sort of just give up on it altogether that sounds like, yeah. so these ones these are ones which have all been for friends where I th often with these type of sites um you'll have little to no budget i think the most we got paid for any of these sites was like six cans of beer or something like <laughs> that um but often with these sites um because it's your friend and because you're only being paid in beer and you kind of come to an understanding that you're going to make it in your spare time and it's going to take ages it allows you to have a much wider i don't know You'd be, you're able to experiment a lot more with what you want to do and you're able to kind of bounce around ideas with the client a lot more and be like oh like maybe we should do something like this maybe we should do something like this and get their thoughts on it like for instance this one is our friend she's a director and uh a whole thing was she was really into like i don't know what did she call it it's like somewhere between like sci-fi movies spaghetti westerns and like really heavy like japanese influenced films so we decided what we we're going to do was take, you know, if you get like a VHS, uh, like a VHS videotape and you like open out the pack, that silver box, uh, not silver, but the plastic box, and then you can like slip the cover out of the box. We decided to use that as the whole layout for the site. So if you imagine, how do you open this? There we go. This thing here is like the spine of the VHS. This is like your blurb and your information on the back. And then the cover of the VHS is all the little projects that you can run into. And then we decided to give it like a sci-fi feel. We we're going to do this little like 3D, like web scope thing where you can kind of bounce around and give them all like the X, Y, and Z coordinates as to where they are in the 3D space. Let's have a little look. And then they come up in here, like a little uh, 3D theatre. And then that was, it was a magazine, wasn't it, the blog one? Yeah, it's kind of an online magazine. So that was the, um, this was the friend who we were introduced um, to Claire Barrow 
through. Um, so yeah, this was just like a website with my old housemate. Um, and she kind of just like had this whole spreadsheet that she'd made and it was just like all of these references, really old websites. And she was like, I just wanted to have like as many kind of like pointless links and like Easter eggs and little surprises as possible. I was like, okay, sick. Um, and I think, yeah, it was kind of like no budget, although she ended up getting some more input, which was nice. Yeah. Um, but it just meant that like this, again, was like, it kind of took a really long time just because it kind of gave us the freedom to just like take it in if we wanted, have as much kind of creative control and, ex and experimentation as we wanted. Um, so yeah, there's this little kind of menu. Um, but yeah, the fact that it was just like a project with a mate and the fact that like, it was just lucky that all her references were really fun and I really liked all of them. And she was just like, yeah, everything can be like as ridiculous and unreasonable as possible. I was like, brilliant. Um, so yeah, there's this funny little menu. Um, switch the music off. Um, she let us put in like this little kind of medieval guy with a loop, which um, turns the sound on and off and the loop appears and disappears. Um, and then I think each of the entries have just like a different layout and look and some of them are kind of, some of them we took a really long time sort of like coding into and other ones are just really basic. Um, but the whole thing's kind of a bit of a joke and a bit of a take on like, old websites from like the early noughties and like the late nineties. Um, there's this like ridiculous page with like, it's not gonna load is it? <laughs> oh no, here it is. It's like all the people who contributed and you can kind of drag their bubbles around. If I clicked on one, it kind of, you click on one and then it pops and then a little bit of information about them. Um, so yeah, that was that one. That was quite fun. Now these ones, I guess this is the the next section where we're like, okay, if we're gonna do if we're gonna do all the fun stuff, we need to do stuff that actually like helps people. Um, and I guess, I mean, looking at them, none of them really helped anyone, but they were like <laughs> stuff for, like. Okay, for instance, like if an independent designer um, came to us and doesn't really have any money but has spent a load of time designing this new collection and would like like some kind of really nice digital experience to back it up or to be able to sell the collection or like genuinely just needs a hand with something, it's something like even though like we find it really interesting and it would technically be quite a lot of work, it's something that we wouldn't really feel comfortable charging like full client rates for. Yeah. So we did it's like half a fun one on our end, half to help them out, half just to like do something that we'll both really enjoy. And then I guess in the same vein as the actual mates rates ones, there's a lot more scope for like bouncing ideas around and having a bit of fun with it. Yeah. And I think also like, yeah, with with the sort of like more independent projects where it's like, okay, like this is realistically gonna take like this much time and going by our kind of like rough day rate whatever that is like we should probably be charging a lot more for it but like they obviously can't afford this and it's not fair that just like big corporations can get nice websites and smaller clients can't um and i think and then the other one like so this one down here with the charity ones that was um it was one of this these ones where like no one on the project's getting paid anything so that's the word kind of, oh, i hope so Oh, sick. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of other side of it as well. Like if we're working on a project and it's like purely charitable and like no one else who's working on it is getting paid anything, then it's kind of like, okay, that's fair. No one's, no one's like profiting off this apart from the actual cause that the, that the website is kind of for. Um, yeah. What else was I going to say? I had, I had a really good point. Well, so we're gonna have to, <laughs> you're gonna have to leave. But I had a really good point there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I swear, even with this one, like, I feel like we've said it about a hundred times now. This was one where Riff's housemate did the three D scanning, 
my housemate did the sound design, we did the programming, the whole thing. I mean, if this was like a bigger client, this would have cost an absolute fortune in like research and development and figuring out how to make everything work and testing. But because it was like an independent fashion designer who just wanted to like almost collaborate with us in a sense and just kind of see where it went, we could kind of get a lot more creatively invested in it and kind of have a lot more fun with it. Uh, we ended up scanning our friends in her jewelry um, and then making this weird little world. This whole like yellow background was like a wax sculpture she'd made um, that was then 3D scanned. And then I wonder how do we get to, oh yeah, there you go. When you, we scanned each individual piece of jewelry and then you can see them all in 3D in this little like lake. And that's, I do the, remember what I was gonna say. Um, I, I think that's the other thing as well, like working, um, working with like smaller independent like artists and brands the studios um i guess like you can you can make something a lot more interesting in like a similar amount of time because there isn't like such a kind of rigid system of like of like things having to be passed along an email chain and like 10 people kind of reviewing something before it's allowed to go anywhere and i think because a lot less money is kind of like ex being exchanged like there's a lot less kind of like at stake and a lot more freedom to just be like oh yeah why don't we try this thing um and yeah just all the time it takes to kind of get like 20 people on a, in like a boardroom on board um just it just isn't a thing so you're kind of talking directly to the person getting their input being like do you like it do you not like it and um, yeah it's a lot nicer and more straightforward it feels like a lot more of an organic process rather than like being like oh i feel like really excited about this thing like oh the creative process and then having that interrupted by being like okay now it's like three days of emails and Zoom calls before we can actually do anything else with it. Because um, I think for this, I just remember you and Ash kind of just like, Ash just being like, yeah, I'm like skating over to like 3D scans and yeah, stuff like every day for a week. Yeah, it's not really nice. Together, yeah. Um, what else have we got in this section? Maybe let's have a look at these ones. Oh yeah, so I guess these ones are kind of the final the final section, these are the ones where it's like big clients and these are the ones that pay the bills whereby you don't get as much creative input. A lot of the times these will be designed by someone externally or the client will already have half the site designed and you'll kind of be brought into, um, what's the word, um, consult on the design and like figure out with them what's possible and what's not possible. Often, so Hypebeast for instance, There'll be hype beast here, then Nike will come to hype beast, hype beast will come to us, and we kind of have to pass it up the chain as to what part of the hype beast design is possible. Then Nike will sign off on that, send the feedback back down to hype beast. Hype beast will come to us and say, okay, cool, they want that, but they don't want that. We're like, okay, cool, that's not possible, that's possible, go fine. So these are, even though the, the sites themselves, the outcome is often a lot smaller and sometimes less interesting because of all that back and forth and because it's a big client, these are the ones that kind of tick along in the background and keep everyone paid, keep everyone mm -hmm. fed. I um, think though it's worth saying, that, like, I think like the selection we've got here is actually- These are I mean, pretty all these right. are, Yeah, these are the kind of fun ones. And there are like plenty more really boring ones that we haven't shown because it's just like boring for you to look at. But um, I think some, like a lot of the time and, this isn't to like encourage you to do loads of free work and like get like exposure and stuff, but sometimes by doing kind of the more experimental projects and like sharing kind of work we do for fun that kind of keeps us kind of like creatively stimulated and like interested in our job. Um, a lot of the time that's what kind of attracts bigger clients and they'll often be like, oh, you did this thing for that person or like we saw that thing on your Instagram that we shared um can you do that for us so some of the time it will kind of be repeating something we've already done but by putting sort of work that you want to do out into the world and out onto the internet um often that will kind of like attract more work in a similar vein um 
So I think, yeah, we've been fairly lucky. Like, That's how we ended up doing everything in 3D for all eternity, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> forever and ever. Because we thought, oh, it'd be fun to do some 3D at one point. And now here we are. Um, this one, oh, oh, I think it's. Do you know the link? Neon wired women, neon. Yeah, there it is. There we go. There we go. This one's, yeah, this one's gone down since it was kind of like a, it was a pandemic one where, it was like another one where they were like, hey, like we want a 3D gallery, um, which ended up actually taking place in real life as well. But they kind of were like, it's going to happen in a warehouse if it does happen. That's great. Um, Water makes us wet. <laughs> So this one was interesting actually because it was like it was very similar to the Claire Barrow one where there was a kind of thing where you could like edit where things sat in the space, but there were more different art, there were like different artists involved, and it was kind of more to like make it look like an actual exhibition space. And then there were these other rooms, one was like a library, one was like kind of screening room, um, and all the like work spots. So this is the sort of like main room and then all the works got organized into like either the walls of this big sort of main space or along the walls of these other little rooms off the sides of things. Um, and then, yeah, accessibility was like a really big priority for them. So we spent loads of time sort of working out how to make it really accessible. So I suppose with, with 3D, like it's, it looks cool and stuff, but if you're like using a screen reader or if you've got a bit of a slower or older device, like suddenly the site's like almost unusable, unusable. So we kind of made these like 2D overlays for the sort of 3D environment, but then we turn into like an entire 2D site that pulls all the same work and data and information um, so that, yeah, they could kind of like update the 3D space and then it would sort of like generate this kind of 2D version of the website as well if people wanted to browse in a bit more of a kind of like straightforward kind of way. Um, so if you can look at them more, I've got that. Yeah. So it kind of scrolls you down and then, yeah, much less interesting to look at, but it was kind of interesting to see how we could sort of translate across like, like sort of basically having like two different websites that having these kind of like yeah sort of parallel threads and like page structure and what have you kind of running through both of them you're in the library the library <laughs> you like click on some of the stuff in the room as well so, yeah, more, more right. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think we have like a few minutes left. I don't know if there is anything else you wanted to share or if no, that's it. Oh, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Nice. Well, thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate that you shared your project, but also you shared as well with us your process and you know, like how you choose the right work is definitely an important question. Um, is there any question in the room? Where do they find their housemates? <laughs> in the pub. <laughs> I found my, I went to uni with all of my, we've lived together ever since. <laughs> and that was like, God, what was I that? Swear, yeah, I don't know. Oh, seven we've always years felt like, any, I think most people we work with, and the, I think we met originally in the pub as well. I think yeah. I think when we were in university, there's this kind of like dread about what you're going to do after university and how you're going to meet, like meet potential clients and how work's going to come. And I think I don't I don't know how it is in Geneva, but I'm sure it's pretty similar to London, where the entire creative industry goes to the same three pubs in London. So just by going to the pub around the corner from your house. <laughs> You end up with people who work at the magazines, people who work in the design agency. People are always looking for designers and people to work on projects. And if you get drunk in the right place, they usually give you a call. <laughs> <laughs> I think also, yeah, like I, like graduating and like moving to London, it kind of surprised me how small the sort of like creative world was. Because I think yeah. we spent like 
I don't know, I spent like all of uni kind of like idolizing these certain studios and stuff and like certain creators in the industry and then like left and it was like, whoa, like all these people are here, that's crazy. <laughs> and then after a while it was like, no, that's not crazy. It's just like a really, really small industry like compared yeah. to how you think it is. Um, so yeah, that was cool. And yeah, they're all in the pub. Yep. <laughs> That's really bad advice. Why are we telling them to just get drunk? Um, yeah, also sometimes you, you shouldn't get drunk, you should do loads of work instead. But definitely like, go to the pub too. Any other questions? No. Hmm? No, every question is. Do you want to have lunch with that traduit? Because I'm sure. You said you have a background in uh, graphic design. Are you still doing some graphic design, or now are you only doing some graphic design in, with websites? Actually, yeah. um, I think you were doing a bit of graphic design. Oh, oh, sorry, ago. I thought you said you were only doing. But yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah. Um, I think when I was in university, I I envisioned myself leaving university and like working at like a graphic design studio, doing like branding and typography and that kind of thing. Uh, and then I guess, I guess it just kind of slowly, the, like the thought process slowly translated into like more kind of digital outcomes. Like instead of thinking about how how is the typography going to work in this nightclub poster? It's more like, how is like the user going to be able to interact with this typography within like the dimensions of the browser and what can it do and how can it animate? I guess like we still do, we still, I guess it's still technically graphic design, but it's more geared towards like interactivity and how people are going to use it and how people can play with it yeah. rather than just like a static logo on the screen or. I think also like, uh university I found out that I was really scared of graphic design and like especially like print stuff because it's like oh you've just got like this page and you have to fill it and then like when you've decided on a layout like that's final and why I was like personally drawn to like interactive and like digital stuff was because it was like something you have to like create something within parameters that are already kind of decided for you and a lot of the design is like informed by like what you actually want to do. And then also like a lot of it changes based on how the user interacts with it. And all that was quite appealing. So it was like, okay, I don't have to make all of these decisions. Like these decisions are made for me and these decisions like don't need to be made yet. And they just are gonna be like, so you're at this sort of middle point between like the parameters that are already there and like what the user is actually gonna do. Um, and that feels quite nice because then whenever you have like a bit of a like self-doubt moment, I guess, where you're like, oh my goodness, I'm really bad at graphic design. It's kind of like, you can just like return to like, sort of like the parameters you're working with or like, yeah, the thing you want the website to do. Like, if, you know, it's like either it works or it doesn't work to a certain extent. Um, so yeah, I think actually like, I don't know, there was like a point where I think we were working quite a lot with other graphic designers and not really designing much of our own stuff. And now we started like doing our own design a lot more. Oh yeah, that's the thing as well. So yeah. with with coming from a design background and learning code and like code being kind of a secondary thing at first, what we found at first is when we were designing the site, one of the traps you can often fall into is only designing things that you know you're going to be able to code rather than like designing something completely random and out of the blue and then trying to figure out how to code it and like challenging yourself and learning something. So a lot of the time it's nice to work with other designers because they'll throw you like a complete curveball that you then have to figure out. Um, but often it's good to it's good to remember to try and challenge yourself when you're designing. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. And I think now like of like yeah kind of having come back to doing the design work ourselves more like a i remember how like terrifying it is to just be like faced with like oh my god like i could design anything and um, be i've started forgetting to design things that i know how to code and make them like easier for myself so quite often i'll like i'll be like yeah this looks cool like i'm actually happy like happy with the design which is quite a new feeling and then i'll get around to coding it and i'm like i didn't think like anything about how 
I actually build that, but um, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of good in a way. It's kind of good to challenge yourself to so, an yeah. extent. <laughs> we still do graphic design, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, thank you. I think we have to to wrap up. It was um, so great to to meet you. Thank you so much for your presentation. And actually, uh, I mean, we're gonna see you in February, right? I think, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm looking forward. And um, yeah, this is going to be fun. And thank you so much for your presentation and sharing all of your work with us. Thank you. Oh, yeah, thanks for having us. Cheers, guys. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.